All right, so here we're going to try to improve the side splitter theorem. Now, a quick explanation of what this theorem is saying. If you have a diagram like this, two triangles set up, one inside the other. So here we have triangle A, C, E, the larger triangle, and inside B, C, D, right? You can quickly prove that these two triangles are similar if you know, right, at least that B, D, this line right here, is parallel to AE. So if BD is parallel to AE, right, that's these two lines right here, we can quickly prove that these two triangles are similar. What you would do if, if you know that ACE is a triangle is establish that this angle here, right, that's angle CBD, that's congruent to CAE right here, because two parallel lines form uh, corresponding congruent angles. And CDB is congruent, right, to CEA, right? So those two angles are equal. And last, angle BCD is equal to ACE, right? In other words, this angle is equal to itself. That's the reflexive property. So we could have a two-column proof here, right? We have statements and reasons. And maybe, first of all, depending on exactly what they give you, perhaps they give you that we have a triangle. So one, we would say, oh, we have triangle A, C, E. And that's given. And next, you would need to know that, in this case, B, D, line B, D, is parallel to line A, E. And that would also need to be given, right? And then you could say, we can just retrace our steps here, C, B, D, angle C, B, D is congruent to CAE, angle CAE. And that's because parallel lines form corresponding angles, corresponding angles. And you, you might have to write out that corresponding angles are formed by parallel lines, if that's required, right? Depending on uh, what the requirements are of your, of your math work. And then we have CDB, CDB, is congruent to CEA, angle CEA. And again, that's for corresponding angles are formed, um, corresponding angles are congruent, excuse me, corresponding angles are congruent with parallel lines. So you, you probably want to write that full thing out there. And then basically you're saying that angle BCD equals itself, or is congruent to angle ACE, and that's the reflexive property. And now you have that the two triangles are congruent. So triangle BCD is congruent to triangle ACE. All right. And that's by the angle, angle, angle postulate. Now, if that's true, right, if these two triangles are congruent, then you could set up a ratio of the sides. So, for example, um, the length of side CA the longer side to the shorter side of the smaller triangle CB would be proportional to the length CE to the shorter side CD. And this would be the proportion we can use to prove the side splitter theorem. So in, based on this logic right here, we know, for example, the ratio of the two longer sides, the longer side of CA, or side CA, excuse me, to shorter side CB is going to equal the ratio of CE, right, to CD. So this is not exactly the side splitter theorem yet. It's close to it. The side splitter theorem, what it says is not the ratio of the longer side, or excuse me, the side CA to CB is equal to CE to CD, but it says that the ratio of this piece right here, let me just color over it there, CB, right, to BA, this chunk right here, is equal to the ratio of CD, this side, try to color it in there for you, to D right here. So those ratios are equal, and we can actually prove that from right here. And it just requires a little bit of observation and manipulation. Uh, it's, it's, I think, one of the more manageable proofs. So just observe, first of all, that this entire side length is CA. 
And we can agree, I think, that CA is equal to the sum of the two segments, CB and BA. And on the other side, we can say the same thing. CE is this entire side, and CE equals the sum of CD, that's this piece right here, and DE, the shorter piece. Now, if we substitute these into our proportion here, we get a lot closer to the side splitter theorem. So for CA, I have CB, right, plus BA over CB, that's the left side, equals CE, but CE we can write as CD plus DE, that's this statement right here, over CD, right? Just like that. And, and now, right, if we think about this left-hand side of the uh, equation, um, if, if you think of, for example, three-fifths plus, I don't know, uh, four-fifths, what would that be? Well, that would be seven-fifths, right? But notice how you could think of seven-fifths in this way, three plus four over five, and that would still equal seven-fifths. So we're kind of here, but with, with, with algebra, and we're going to go this way to this piece right here. So if I had three plus four over five, that would be three over five plus four over five. I have CB plus BA over CB. So I'm going to write that as CB over CB. Right? And a lot of lines there. Those are confusing. Sorry about that. I'll write a larger, that's my fraction, over CB plus BA. Right? Over CB. And the same reasoning on the right hand side here. On the right hand side, we have CD over CD plus DE over CD and what's nice here is we get some things canceling out CB over itself whatever it is is just one and CD over itself is also one as well I can't reduce the other terms yet but I think you'll see already that we're much closer to the side splitter theorem and these things these, are, these two expressions are equal so DE over CD. And we subtract 1 from both sides, right? Subtract 1, subtract 1. And now we're left with this statement right here. Let's cancel out. And we get BA over CB equals DE, right, over CD. And let's see what that means. So let's just let's copy this and drag it up to our diagram. See if we get something that we can make sense of here. Okay, I'll move this over, he over here. All right. So BA, that's this piece. This is BA. BA is right here. The ratio of BA to CB is equal to the ratio of what? DE to CD. And we can flip this upside down to get usually what I think you would see for the side splitter theorem. Just reverse the terms. CB over BA right, equals CD over DE. And that would just mean then that CB, this length, to BA is proportional to CD, this length right here, to DE. And, you know, you can always flip the, the, the proportions like this as long as you flip or take the reciprocals of both sides of the proportion. Think about something simple, um, you know, 5 tenths equals 24 dieths. If I flip both sides, I get 10 over 5 equals 40 over 20. And that's still true. 10 over 5 is 2, and 40 over 20 is still 2. So that, that still works. All right, so we, again, we can prove this, prove the side splitter theorem by using, in this way at least, the angle-angle postulate here and some basic algebra to show how it works. Thanks.